What's up? It's your boy Carcino here. Just doing a lot of cleaning up and sorting stuff out and, you know, doing what I do. But uh, I've been saying, well, I have ignored a lot of your questions because I've been busy. But I'll answer a couple, you know, while I'm up. Um, all I'm doing right now is kind of looking over some things I got when Obama got elected. You know, definitely collect those. But there's some things people didn't see. My 9-11, you know, things. I put them in plastic, preserved them. Special edition newspapers. Because actual footage don't actually match up to what's in the papers. You know, so. This one they call Saddam. You know what I'm saying? So... And nation cheers. And they were, we still don't know what the crime was. I asked people like, well, what did he do? He ran the plane into the towers. Him and Bin Laden was working together. I'd be like, they was? News to me. <laughs> and, of course, what I knew to be a monumental moment in Cubs history, in baseball history, in history, period. Bartman touching the ball. That was such a monumental moment. I knew game seven didn't even matter. It was out the door. This whole city knew. The city, it was like somebody died that night when they lost. Three to nothing in the eighth inning, end up losing eight to three. Mentally dead after the play. The biggest collapse probably anybody's ever seen. In such a situation, just five outs away, just bad. And for Cub fans, we're not going to bring that pain up, and we'll just skip over that. <laughs> and um, a lot of you guys were asking me, like, what's up with me and Nori? You know, like, like we have a actual communication between me and Noriega. From Capone and Noriega. I mean, Nori's Nori. You know, um, we knew people that ran with him back in the day. You know, back when the Mob Deep and all that stuff was popping. Back when people used to be cool. You know, we knew guys that ran with them. They was from over there. They was from uh, Jackson and all them places, you know. So, you know, they around the way. <laughs> but, um... What we know about Nori is, you know, not to deal with him. Basically, that's that's what I know. And that's what we've been taught. Is Nori, see, Nori's the type that's cool with everybody. You know, and like Jay said in Streets Why, you cannot keep playing both sides of the fence. Eventually, it catches up to you. And that stuff caught up to Nori. So, a lot of people be like, man, what are you talking about? What happened to Nori? Well, you kept seeing him, you know, playing both sides of the fence. He was with tragedy, then he saw the situation, he, then he over here with Nas, then he dips from Nas, he over there with with Rockefeller, you know, he's just jumping from ship to ship. He cool with Prodigy when they beefing with with his man's Capone, you know, and they was like, yeah, but he held Capone down. He had no choice. When he got hot, when Capone went to jail and he basically made his own album and got hot, he had no choice but to look out for Capone. One, they had a, a big offer on the table. You know, people was like, we want to see that Capone Noriega album. Wait till Capone get out and everybody like, yo, it's going to be on and popping. And then that album was kind of weak. So when they came out, it didn't work. And Nori was already bigger, but he had to look out. Everybody kept asking Nori, like, yo, what's up with Capone? Yo, what's up with Capone? If he if Capone got out and he didn't look out for Capone, that would be monumentally bad for Nori. But when you keep jumping ship like that and rolling with clicks, you know what I'm saying? He'll be friends with Nori the type that'll be friends with your enemy. You know, you got beef with this guy, Nori, like, oh, I'm cool with him too. And that guy be coming to shoot you. Nori ain't even gonna tell you about it. He's going to be like, man, that's y'all problem. I'm going to let that happen. And then next thing you know, he rolling with the guy that's shooting at you. It's like, dude, this dude just looking shots at me and you in the club taking pictures with him. 
That look kind of strange, homie. You know, that's my assessment. And when a guy that's going to roll with your enemies and keep rolling like that, people going to keep you at arm's distance. And pretty soon, you start seeing Nori less and less and less. And you start hearing, like, man, dude, 400, 500 pounds. He looked like Big Pun. Then what do you do? You, you got to get out of New York, reinvent yourself, let people miss you for a minute, come back anew, and act like, hey, I'm hitting the restart button. So I understand the hustle. You know, I, I get it. I, I've seen people do that. But they normally didn't last long in the business, and I don't know if people are fooled by that. But they'd be like, oh, what's up? You know, give them a dap. Nobody really, like, working with him. So he got his little podcast thing going, and more power to him. I hope him nothing but success. And hope his podcast do the biggest numbers out there. And And that seems like a better avenue for him than, you know, trying to deal with these other people on other levels. So we'll see what happens. It's your boy Carcino. I'm out on that note. And um, what was the other question y'all sent me? Um, damn. I'm about to have it written down here. It was something y'all was asking me. Oh, y'all was talking about... Uh, why don't I jump on LL Cool J? He's too old to be rapping. But I talk about everybody else rapping. And Charlemagne the God attacked LL Cool J and you attacked Charlemagne. Why did I do that? I'm being a hypocrite. Because he's, he should be sitting down too. Listen. If LL Cool J spit some bars that was whack. I'll be like, look. That's whack. Go sit down. But when Charlemagne say something is whack just to be saying something, I'm not finna listen to Charlemagne, who's just trying to create some controversy to get whatever thing that he want to get across. So, you know, props to him for baiting LL Cool J into the argument. But I, like I told people, LL will punch that man in the face. That's not the guy you want to play that game with. Y'all think he's because he licks his lips. <laughs> He'd be like, huh, huh, boy, you crazy. <laughs> you tried to play the wrong one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you wild. Yeah, then they'll knock his, knock his teeth out. <laughs> he can get in too deep if he won't. But, yeah, that's what that is. And uh, season three of Power... Uh, my, my boy is in the movie. Well, he's on, on the show, rather. He got on the episode. And, um, you know, I was hoping, like, any break I could get, I'll, do, I'll fly out there to give him power. Power's, the, power's that business. But he told me that 50 is, uh, basically is in some, some, some of the back stories. They're gonna, you're gonna find out how 50 got the scar on his neck that you see. Back when he was caning, they're gonna go back and show some of that stuff. They're not really going to show what happens to 50 after the aftermath of season two. We don't really find that out just yet. It might come, it's come near the end of season three, but they're going to be doing a backstory, kind of like bringing you up to speed on why why they had to do the setup so he can go away. And them as youngsters, you know, starting out when 50 was running things. So we're going to see more of that in season three of Power. So... Keep your head up. And what else is going on? Uh, yeah, uh, views. I'm still reviewing the album. You know, so, you know, right off the bat, my favorite song is Hype right now. Uh, I play that one, you know, on the up and up. But I don't know how people do album reviews after like a day. How do you review an album after a day? That's just, unless it just blows your mind right away, which a lot of songs on there don't. They kind of have the, like, you could tell they recorded at different periods. Like, some of the stuff was, like, old. Like, this was done, like, last year sometime. And then you could see, you could tell some songs are more modern. They feel spaced out. They don't feel connected. It feel like a collaboration of songs. And I think the listing is bad. I think when when they go back and do 
had done the track listing, they didn't. I don't think the the lineup is right. So it just it don't sound like an album. And see, this is what's missing with the internet. Everything is broken down into songs. Albums used to be themes, and used to be stories. When you write rhymes, I don't. Well, I write rhymes. I write stories. Like the whole our song is a story basically, and it's broken down and being told through the words and there's metaphors and everything in there, but it's all it's a point to it, which makes the song have a meaning. And it has its own place. You know, when I told you I made the song Panda in two thousand nine, that was about like I said, it was about interracial couples, black black uh father, white mother black mother, white father, and they kids, and how the kids was acting, and the kids was mixed, so there was Panda, so it was, you know, and we was going through different stories with them, and how they are different personalities, because they have, they're basically stuck in the middle, you know, white American don't accept them, black America, they ain't black enough, so they, and they stuck in the middle, they're their own, basically, their own race, so, it was called Panda. And that was in 2009 I wrote that. So that was just an example of what I was just showing you, that songs are used to be structured like that, like they used to have meaning. Now things have changed around to the point where it's not like that no more, basically. So uh, I don't know what to tell you. Um, I just wish that Drake album had more of that format. Some of the songs sound similar. They're like it's it's about maybe four or five songs. They they so 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 but they similar. So I'm like, well that sound like this song. And then this song you don't you don't want to have the same song sounding alike back to back on the track list. And you hear that sometimes. I'm like, man, this sound like Kanye flashing lights. Right here, and then here comes another one. I'm like, that sound like Kanye flashing lights too. So, you know, it's a uh, it's a very uh, interesting album so far. Um, it picked up steam once it got like near the middle. It really started picking up. Like once hype kicked in, that's when the song started really getting into the meat. And I was like, oh, okay, here we go. You know, you got too many songs that's, like, it's one person out there was like, man, he's singing too much. Man, Drake just singing all the time now. I'm like, well, he's an R&B artist slash singer. He's a singing guy. He came in singing and rapping. People forgot he sung. <laughs> he's been doing all the rap stuff now. People forgetting, like, he actually just sings. And, you know, most of him is about relationship pains. But so far, the album is so-so. Eh, you know, it's not like the greatest thing of it. It's a classic album. I haven't gotten to that status yet, but I'm still reviewing it. So give me about <coughs> four or five days, and I'll give you a, a perfect assessment of the album. You know, I got to sit with it for a while, see what the songs are. But right now, like I said, hype is leading the pack. And what else is going on around here today? Um, I think I've addressed everything now that you guys wanted me to answer, like the main questions. I think I did a lot of answering questions on the videos. Oh, yeah, if you're going to follow me, follow me on Twitter. Like I keep telling y'all, Facebook, I mean, you can. You can follow me on Facebook, too, if you want. I mean, but. All you're going to really see is nothing but, like, family stuff. I rarely post anything on there about hip-hop. Uh, Twitter is something that's, you got a better chance of getting me to, like, respond and kick back stuff with you on Twitter than Facebook. So, that's where we at there, and... Yeah, and the MC Shan thing, yeah, I hope he's just done... Because I, I hate going back and forth with him. That's just terrible. You know, I don't ever want to wish that on anybody. So, that's that. And this guy was like, dude, you, when you going to do the breakup of uh, <clears throat> of uh, Eric B and Rakim? Tell you the truth, I've done that video already. 
but it's on the vote right now. The reason why I put it in the vote is because when I had it up, for some crazy reason, you know, YouTube do stupid stuff at times. People, I uh, guess, uh, spend some type of dough to try to have me shut that. They talking about some. I had a parent. I needed a parental advisory thing. I'm like, what? They've been really trying to find ways to screw with your boy. So, this whole past two weeks, well, not two weeks, about a week and a half since Lemonade came out. Now you, now you do the math. Since Lemonade come out, all of a sudden they want to get chatty, chatty with me. Oh, this video here, we we might have to change the parental settings. I'm no, we don't. Nothing wrong with this video. I have the motion stuff. I've been motioning crap all in for reviews all this week because they keep trying to find some way that I'm violating some type of code, some way. I got some background music somewhere. We got to find a link. We got to do something. To try to bring him down. And I keep fighting him. Fighting him and fighting him. And this happens every other week now. So they really don't like what I'm saying. You know what I say to that?